Hey, what's going on? Luke here, and Saber Virgin Game 3 is next week, but the NRL is still going. It's round 17. It's time to give my tips and predictions for round 17 of the 2021 NRL season. And this round is an origin affected round. There's only four games this week. There's going to be teams that have uh, lots of players out, have heavily depleted sides, but we're still going to be giving my predictions. It is going to be a bit tougher, especially with teams like Manly. There's no Chaboyevich, no Cherry Evans, even Jake Chaboyevich is out. So it is going to be hard to make some predictions, but still, nonetheless, going to be going over all of the games. So the first game of the round is the Manly. Moringa Seagulls taking on at the Canberra Raiders. Now, this is on Thursday night, and my initial thoughts when I looked at the team lineups were, oh, well, Raiders should smash Manly. Like I just touched on earlier, there's no Chaboyevich, no Cherry Evans, no Jake Chaboyevich. Look, realistically, on paper, Raiders have a way better side. I know Jack Whiten is out, but just at least you go through all the players. Uh, they still got Jared Croker. They still got Jordan Ruppiner. They still got bloody Josh Hodgson. Dynamis Louis there. Harry Onara. Um, Hudson Young's been pretty good. They got Soliola Tapani. They got lots of good players in the side, and yet they're not producing on the field. They were absolutely towed up last week, and I didn't see it coming. Like, oh, I kind of half saw it coming. I thought whoever won out of the Titans and Raiders, I thought they would smash him, but I thought it was going to be the Raiders. I thought the Raiders would end up picking up the victory over the Titans, and instead, they got absolutely hammered. Whereas Manly, they did what I thought they were going to do. It's exactly what I thought they were going to do. 66 0 against the Bulldogs, but this is a complete different Manly side. Uh, Ruben Garrick's at fullback, and and he's done a serviceable job, but at the same time, he's no Tom Trevojevic. Um, you add in the rest of the guys out. I think Cherry Evans will be a huge out for them. But I think just in terms of filling in for one game, I think Manly can get the job done. And, and like I touched upon, I do think the Raiders on paper have a better side. And realistically, they should get the win. But it's just, I can't tip the Raiders. Every time I go to tip the Raiders, they end up coming out and getting smashed. And Manly is sort of vice versa as well. Manly, if I tip against them, they usually come out and smash the other team. So I'm going to have to go Manly on this one. I'm going to go 1-12. I think it'll be a tight one. But I feel like Manly will just have... Just, they just have too much confidence, too much momentum going, and the Raiders are the complete opposite of that. they got no momentum, no confidence, lots of infighting, lots of uh, sort of rumors going around the side. Look, I don't know what's happening at the Raiders, but something is definitely happening, and that's very clear. Uh, the whole sort of George Weir situation, I think that was the start of it, and I think the Raiders, they've been super disappointing in 2021, mainly obviously killing it, and even if they've got their superstars out, I still think they'll get the job done. Now, I think it'll be a scrappy win for them, but I'm just going to go with Manly. Like, honestly, I don't really have too much confidence in saying that. Uh, and like I said, I think the Raiders have a better side. So everything says, oh, just tip the Raiders. Surely they're going to get a win here. But I just I just don't have it in me to do it. So I've gone the Manly 1-12. to Actually, one thing I'll just touch upon is Dylan Walker at halfback. I find that so weird just to see him wearing the number 7. I know he's played the number 6 quite a bit, but just seeing him in the halfback role, it just feels so weird. But he's actually been playing pretty decent off the bench. So maybe he'll step into the number 7 role. I feel like Kieran Foran will end up playing halfback and Dylan Walker will play 5-8. Um, Foran's very, very okay capable of doing that. Um, but yeah, just it seems weird having Dylan Walker there, but I still think he'll actually do a good job. But like I said, mainly 1-12. to Now moving on to Friday night, it's the South Sydney Rabbitohs hosting the North Queensland Cowboys. Now the Rabbitohs very heavily affected by origin, but not as much as what they could have been. Obviously Adam Reynolds and Cody Walker are still on the side and they easily could have been in the New South Wales side. So in terms of their club team, they're definitely the beneficiaries of this one. And the Cowboys on the other hand, like them looking at their side, uh, they've got a new fullback as Valentine Holmes is out, but there's not too many players out. Colin Hess is still allowed to play although he's in the Queensland squad. Just looking at the rest of it, like the Cowboys side, it's it's not really a good one. You can see why they're not doing that well in 2021. Uh, but the Rabbitohs side themselves, is, it's a very weak side compared to the team that they normally have. Obviously, Latrell Mitchell is out, Damian Cook's out. I think the biggest one for me is Benji Marshall is playing in the hook position. I've seen him play a little bit of dummy half and his passing just isn't there. Um, just in terms of an actual hooker, I just don't think he's cut out for it. And I know there's always the talk of when halves aren't doing so well, oh, just chuck him in the hooker position or throw him on the bench so they can come on and play hooker. But I think Benji Marshall is a perfect example of not everyone's cut out to do that. Obviously, some players can, but I don't think Benji Marshall is able to do it. I've seen guys like Ben Hunt be able to do it, but he's just watching Benji play hooker. It's like, wow. And now they're starting him at the hooker position. Uh, I don't know if that's the right move, but I suppose they don't really have any other choice. There's no other hookers that they could really pick. Obviously, you lose Damian Cook, the best hooker in probably the world at the moment. You'd have to say, at least he's right up there anyways. He's a New South Wales hooker. He's in form at the moment for New South Wales anyways. But uh, look, Tane Mills still there, Campbell Graham. Like the rest of the lineup is pretty much the same. Jaden Sewer back as well for them. It's just, uh, they got, I didn't even know his name, Blake Taff. I'd never really heard of him, to be honest with you. Um, they've got him at fullback. Um, and like I said, Benji at the number nine. I think that is a scary move. Move. So this is a game that I feel like I'm tempted to tip the Rabbitohs purely because Adam Reynolds and Cody Walker are still there. And they still got a lot of the other guys still there. But at the same time, the Cowboys aren't really missing. I know they're missing Valentine Holmes, but, and also the Hammer. I forgot about the Hammer, but 
Um, if you're going to be missing any players, you can kind of get away with missing a, a fullback and a winger. Like, they're not influential in the side, in my opinion. Valentine Holmes is solid, but he's not, like, the main man of the Cowboys. They've still got Tam Lalo. I can easily see the Cowboys winning this one. I can also easily see them getting destroyed, but... I'm going to go with the Cowboys for this one. I'm going to go an upset. I think you'd be deemed an upset still. But I'm going to go with the Cowboys 1-12. to I think Tom Lalo will be able to get them home because the Rabbitohs 4-pack isn't the strongest at the moment. Uh, they still got Colin Montagne still there, who's in the New South Wales squad. Uh, Mark Nichols, Jaden Sewer, Tom Burgess. It is a very good 4-pack, but they haven't got anyone who can really match up against Jason Tom Lalo. And not having Damian Cook there, also Latrell, I think it takes a lot of power out of that side. It takes a lot of that, that aura, that... I don't know, the attacking weapons out of that side. So if the Cowboys can defend half decent, I think they'll be able to snag a couple of tries and get the victory. So Cowboys 1-12. to Now moving on to Super Saturday. I don't know how super this one is, but it's Mike Canterbury Bank Sound Bulldogs taking on the Sydney Roosters. Now this is a very weird matchup. Obviously Roosters missing a couple of players. Bulldogs missing a lot of players due to the whole COVID breach. Obviously they were absolutely smashed by Manly last week. If we thought it was bad against Manly, wait till we play the Roosters. Now Victor Radley is back for the Roosters. Joey Manu shifting to fullback. We've seen be able to do a fantastic job. It's just a shame Joey Manu plays in a side where he can't really get a spot in the halves. Well, I suppose he could get a spot in the halves, but they refuse to pick him in the halves and they keep him in the centers. But we've seen he can be a star fullback. He can be a star halves player. Obviously, he's a star center. Um, he's just such a talented player and he's stuck in the centers getting limited ball. I feel really bad for Joey Manu, but the whole Roosters as a whole, they got smashed last week, no doubt about that, but they're not the first team to get smashed by Melbourne and they won't be the last. Melbourne are just killing it at the moment. Uh, but the Roosters, this is a different side. No James Tedesco there, but they do get Victor Radley back like I touched on. They got Drew Hutchison back at 5'8". I think that's a good move. I think the halves combination of Walker and Drew Hutchison adding Victor Radley there, um, I think it was working really well. Obviously, Hutchison went down with the whole lung situation. The Dog shot. I will call it a dog shot. Um, and then Victor Radley also was injured too. So I feel like Sammy Walker's been getting smashed the last couple of weeks, and his form sort of dipped a little bit. He started off the season real hot, but he's dipped. Def he's definitely dipped. There's no other way to put it. Um, and it's, I don't want to say he's been found out, but he just hasn't had the troops around him that he had when he first came in. And I think that says a lot about the Roosters. Like with all the injuries they've had, they just keep getting more and more injuries and more plays out during Origin, and they still keep turning up. Uh, but they still got Josh Morris there, Billy Smith playing. I don't really know much about him. Him. Uh, you got Daniel Tupo there. They still got enough troops on the field. And like I said, Victor Radley back in the side. He's a huge one. I'm just looking at the Bulldog side. I'm just running over it on my phone. I just seen Corey Waddell and Dylan Napper in the side. So it turns out the guys who did do the whole COVID breach are actually back. And for me, that's not necessarily good news. Corey Waddell, terrible. Dylan Napper on his day can be all right. Taking on these old sides and maybe he'll step up. Maybe these guys will come back and they'll they'll have something to play for. They'll be absolutely firing. But Sione Katoa straight into the side. It's just like everything screams that Roosters should win this one. 13 plus, 20 plus, 30 plus. I don't know what the scoreline is going to be, but Roosters are going to win. And I think they're going to win well. I know the Bulldogs, they might come out strong and they might start off pretty decent and defend well and might put up a bit of an effort. But I think long term throughout the whole game, I think the Roosters will take over at some point And I think they'll put the full it down and just like it is these days I think they'll put a scoreline on the Bulldogs um, it's unfortunate I don't want to be saying that I'm a Bulldogs fan um, so it does suck but I think the Roosters is going to win this one 13 plus I don't really have any doubts about this one I'm pretty confident in saying that now we move on to the last game of the round this is on Sunday it's Granada Sutherland Sharks taking on to the New Zealand Warriors now, both of these sides aren't really affected by Origin too much. Now, both sides do have some changes, but it's nothing really to do with Origin. So, this is probably one of the better games of the round. And the Sharks, who are traveling okay, Warriors traveling okay. They're not really traveling well, but they're not traveling super bad either. Just looking at both the lineups, Reese Walsh is back. For the Warriors, uh, Nick Kareem is back in. They got Matt Lodge making his debut. Um, and Chad Townsend, I thought he looked half decent last week before he ended up injured. Um, and then Tohu Harris as well isn't out for them. So they're two big losses, but Reese Walsh back in, I think it adds a lot to that side. I'm surprised they didn't, or well, they weren't tempted to chuck him into the halves. Um, but they do have Nick Kareem. Nick Kareem is, you know, he's capable. He's capable of playing in the halves. You got Sean O'Sullivan there as well. So look, it's not the best halves pairing, but look, they're coming up against Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson up against his old slash new club. I think it's an interesting element to the game. Uh, Will Chambers is back for them. Antrim Fafita is in. Uh, it's not exactly the Antrim Fafita that we used to know, but I'm, I'm sure he will still pack a punch. Um, but look, this Warriors side, I think it all revolves around Reese Walsh at this point. Um, I think everything in attack is going to be revolving around him. Adam Roger to Avata Shek on the wing. And they do have some lethal players. Got Dallin Matani's Lesniak is there now. I think the Warriors should win this one. Um, 
like, like I said, the Sharks have been fairly solid at times throughout the year, but they haven't really just blown anyone off the park or played a 10 out of 10 game. And I think the Warriors with Walsh back in the side, um, I think they'll be exciting to watch. And I think it'll actually be interesting for Sean Johnson coming up against his new club. Um, he's got Reese Walsh there who will be looking to form a combination with. So you'll get to see him in the flesh, see what Reese Walsh can do. Uh, but Nick Kareem is there. I'm sure he's playing for a contract next year. You've got Matt Lodge making his debut. It is a very interesting game. Uh, in the grand scheme of things of this round, it's probably the most interesting one. Uh, like I said, it's the least game that's origin affected. So in terms of quality, I think it'll be a fairly decent game. But both of these sides, we know they can we know they can play well, but we know they can also play absolutely shit ass too. So in terms of picking a winner, it is tough, but I'm going to go the Warriors. Um, I think the Warriors just have too much attack in them. But the Sharks, they have, you know, Sean Johnson really carries that side for me, but I think they have enough to actually get the win over the Warriors too. So in terms of picking a winner, it is tough. But like I said, Warriors, I'm going to go Warriors 13 plus because I think whoever wins this one, I think they'll win it well. I think, well, maybe not win it well, but I think they'll win 13 plus. I feel like the 13 plus is it's just so easy to go to because of how many blowouts there are these days. But um, yeah, Warriors 13 plus. I think Reeves Walsh have a good game. Roger Tua versus Shaq have a good game. I think Matt Lodge will have a strong first game. So I think everything sort of points towards the Warriors winning this one. Anyways, those are my tips for round 17. Leave in the comment section below. What are your tips for round 17? I'd love to know. Love to know if you agree, if you disagree, if you hate, you rate, whatever you want to do. Leave in the comment section below. What are your thoughts of round 17 and my tips? Also, while you're at it, if you happen to enjoy this video, make sure you go ahead and give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. A lot of people have been subscribing. The growth has been insane the last couple of months so definitely subscribe if you're new around here also turn on the notification bell it's super important to you actually seeing these videos sub boxes are quite dodgy they don't always show the videos so use the notification bell and never miss any of my videos also give me a follow on social media it's on the screen right now it's mr luke and my team for the most part and facebook is just mr luke but everything else is mr luke and my team so go ahead and give me a follow give me an ad do all that sort of stuff and stay tuned for more content on the channel plenty of stuff to be talking about origin is nearly here uh, it's in newcastle now it's been confirmed so hopefully i can get to the game and hopefully I'm going to have more stuff to talk about. So, uh, look, I'm going to end this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. See you.